Hey guys, welcome back to Get a Garage. My name is Mike, and this is a Forrester XT that we have been working on for the past year or so. Uh, it's a good friend of ours, and it blew up on his way to Florida to go and visit some relatives. And we were rebuilding the engine for him, so we got it all back together finally. We've had some trials and tribulations while we were working on it, and it was my first engine build here at Get a Garage, so we were learning a lot about this car. And we are finished, it's complete, it's back together. And now what we need to do is we need to break and tune on this. All right, so we got our box in. I'm so excited. I had to go and shave first because this is a big occasion here. So we're going to open up the box here and see what we got. Uh-oh. I see shiny bits. Oh. Oh. That's fancy. That's cool. It's got their logo. You see that? Yep. That's boss. That is pretty cool. And that is like in there for good. There's no coming out. That's awesome. That's quite a bit different there. Yeah, quite a bit. That's so quite a bit difference. It does have access holes for the bolts right, here, so that's the cool. Right, on them. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Well, I'm excited. This is going to be epic. Well, you can just throw these block caps around. Look at that. That's fancy. What a difference. Yep. I mean... So, in theory, it's going to help support the cylinders from moving around and potentially causing problems in the future. I just like this. That's quite a bit different. That just looks so much cooler. Absolutely. Uh, right now we're waiting on uh, heads and the rotating assembly to be balanced. So we should have all that stuff in the next week or two, and then start putting everything together. Got a little uh, preview of uh, things swapping out. That's awesome. We're gonna plastic gauge the engine, uh, the rods anyway. So got everything ready to go. Here we go. There we go. All right, now we just have to dig our case half bolts out of this pile over here and start putting them in place. So we got good readings across them all. We'll have to measure and double check it all, but we got good readings, which is what we were looking for. We'll be able to measure this stuff now and see what we got. Okay, we got our blog back from the machine shop and it is covered in chips inside. All, all inside of it is all covered in chips. So I'm trying to keep a clean workshop over here and this shit's falling out of it. <laughs> all right, we're just uh, getting ready to do the final assembly on this block. So before we do that, we are taking a fine tooth comb and going over every little last passage and the whole underside and just everything we want to get it as clean as we possibly can. This is just Dawn, some soapy warm soapy water. And this way we know that there's no metal filings anywhere and it's totally clean. Neither one of them will do dishes, but... Right, right. <laughs> That's how it goes though. Yeah. Gotta get them Hershberg's. It's all about the Hershberg's. For building an engine, cleanliness is godliness. We already spent some time cleaning it. Nasty old intake. Somebody must have had an EGR. All right, so we're putting this together for the last time. We uh, just got it back from the machine shop, honed the cylinder walls, and now it's going together for the last time. We just got done cleaning it thoroughly. Now we're just getting the bearings put in. And then this is the last time the bearings are going in. They've been in quite a few times now. We've uh, checked for clearances twice already. Just a uh, little bit at a time. It's going. I think you got it. 
Looks There's like no it. rings on the table. <laughs> there are not. Got it. All right, well, uh, it's been a little while since the last update that we made on this. We've been trying to just make some progress on it, and I haven't really been filming too much. But as you can see here, we do have the, uh, the block together. Uh, head studs are in. All the pistons are installed and everything. This is basically ready for the heads at this point, so we are going to get ready to throw them on. And then... This thing will be just about ready for going back in the car. So after a little while, we are finally getting this done. So I can't wait. This is the first time I've ever built an engine. So I can't wait to get this in the car and kind of work through any problems we might have. So so we're getting ready to put the heads on here. A couple of the things that I learned that I thought were pretty cool about Subaru heads is all of these little uh, bearings have a number on them. And it matches to the head. And there's numbers on all the different parts so you don't screw it up. Also, there's an arrow which also always faces forward. You want to make sure that you keep all of these in the right position. You don't want to change it up. But uh, basically, we ought to take this off, and then we can bolt it onto the block. All right, got the head gasket on. We bought our gasket kit from eBay. We got the ITM gasket kit, so it came with everything, so that's kind of cool. And then installing the head. There we go. Now we just got to put the uh, nuts in here and torque them down. All right, we got our gaskets on the front crossover exhaust pipe. Copper RTV in there just to prevent any leaks. And now we're just gonna bolt this down to the heads and we're just about ready to put this in. We finally, after some struggles and everything, we got the whole EJ25 put together. Uh, the intake's actually going to come back off so we can put it in the engine bay, but right now it is uh, ready to go in, so we're going to take some of this stuff back off and drop it in the car. In lieu of an actual real leveler, we're using ratchet straps to pick this up. It only weighs a couple hundred pounds. It's pretty light, so we're going to try and get it in. Off the stand. Oh, yeah. It's been on the stand on and off for the last year, so it's time. While it was on the stand, obviously we couldn't tighten these down to torque, couldn't get back there, so we're just going to do it now. We got it on the lift, and uh, just stuck a wrench in there to keep it from spinning. All right, well, she is in, minus the intake and accessories, which a lot of them are still up in here, so I think we're going to call it a night and get back at it tomorrow, but uh, for right now, it is in. The motor mounts are in place, the transmission bolts are all tightened up. Now it's just uh, finishing bolting this on, and then we'll do our first startup. Oh, man, I'm excited. Then we can sell it. And buy an Audi. Right. <laughs> All right, so we're getting ready to put the intake on now. Uh, we got the gaskets in place. Um, everything is ready to go. It's been tightened down and double checked and triple checked and the intake can go on. And we can start hooking up the rest of the stuff here, so. The last clip you probably saw was us putting this engine in the Forester XT. We did a little bit of work on it last night and did a bolt check and a couple of other things just to make sure it was ready to go. We have the tuner coming over today to put the base tune on this so that way we can do the engine break in. It's been a long project. We've been working on it about two years now. It's May 2020. We started this in 2018, so I'm definitely nervous. This is the first time I've ever built an engine from nothing and this is definitely not like a good beginner engine it's a lot more complicated and it's different than most four cylinders or even v8s it's split the case and all that stuff so he'll be here today got a couple hours we got to drain the rest of the fuel out and put some fresh 93 in it i'm excited and i'm nervous at the same time so we'll have to see how it goes
if everything goes according to plan, the next clip you guys should see should be this thing starting up. This should be the first startup. We're not gonna run it. This is only for like a second to make sure that it'll fire up for when the tuner gets here, so. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Sounds good. It yeah. does sound good. You need to get fuel to that. I engine, say, though. I think because we, we drained the fuel out, it's probably lagging. And... That's my thought, too. Huh. That's a loose ground. Yeah? Yeah. Time out. Try it again. Huh. All right, so we had a, a fault code stored in the ECU. It was preventing it from starting, and there's wasps, sorry. The fault code was for the crank position sensor, so I cleared the fault code. I may have blown it up once, the engine. You did? It may have been blown up. Maybe. It may have been blown up. Slightly. A little, a little big hole. That oiled nice. Yeah, boy. Oh, that sounds good. That oiled nice. All right, so the tuner's gonna be here in like, what, an hour or two? We don't have anything else to do until he gets here. Too bad we didn't bring any guns. <laughs> That's actually really good. That's the first time I've ever built an engine and heard it start, so I'm pretty I'm pretty happy right Completely. now. Completely bare, bare, bareness. Like we had the block, the crank split, everything. Like shh, man, I'm stoked right now. I can't now can't wait for that guy to get here. This is awesome. Let's build more engines, guys! Yeah, right. <laughs> Figure if somebody's gotta do it. If somebody built it to begin with, somebody High five, everybody. out there to fix High it. High fives. High fives all around. Two and a half years in the making. <laughs> Vivian. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> High five. High five. <laughs> as far as the Subaru goes, I, I, you know, we only started it for a second so far, but I would have to say that it, it kind of makes me want a Subaru a lot more now than before. And I've had a Subaru in the past, and I sold it, but I, I really, I'm thinking that it would be, you know, something that, something that would be fun around here. Rally, rally shit. I think he's got the break-in tune done, and we're gonna do uh, the initial, like, startup slash break-in procedure uh, starting now, so. That I see. And yeah, she's burning. Sounds balanced. <laughs> good, it's good. I feel how much that Yo, it blew up in North Carolina. I had to have it towed by a complete stranger. It was dropping off a race car, dude, for like 80 bucks because he didn't want to haul back an empty trailer. It was like a whole bunch of like Hail Mary passes that made this happen. What do you think? You guys spoiled me, Audi. I really did. <laughs> How was that? Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah? Everything seemed good? Oh, yeah. We had to stop twice to put a little more water in it. It took out a little bit of coolant. Not but see yeah. any more smoke? No, dude, it is nice. It's nice. I'm stoked. We're gonna, after we're done, we're gonna go for a ride. Brakes definitely need to be done on this. <laughs> yeah, I heard it when you are pulling up a little bit. I could hear it. Yeah. Um, but she's, uh, looks like the temperature is staying pretty steady now. All right. This yeah. is so exciting. Well, it just shut off on its own. Did it?
Huh. So, when the tuner was here, uh, we had a clip of the video. The car just died. We didn't know what happened. Uh, we logged some stuff, and we weren't getting a crank positioning sensor at all, which is strange because a car shouldn't run without it. Took the sensor off, and lo and behold, after screwing around with trying to get it off for a few minutes, it was actually a bent pin, and we plugged it in correctly, and she started right back up again. So, one of the things that is like the number one thing that it prevents an engine from starting is the wiring and just stupid connectors and clips and grounds and stuff like that. Like when you put a new engine in, that's always what it is. And that's exactly what we had. Both of our grounds were loose and our crank positioning sensor connector was screwed up. Other than that, it was great. The brakes definitely are sounding better. They are. Quarter mile time. <laughs> is, is there a mile time? Shh. It looks so good though. It feels good. It really, really sounds like a brand new car. It does. I love it. Alright guys, so as you can see and through the video, we have got this thing running finally. It has been a journey for sure. Um, I learned a lot. We all learned a lot in this whole process. Um, and it's the most rewarding thing that I've probably ever done is hearing this thing fire up that first time. Uh, it's just, it was just absolutely incredible. Uh, we still have to finish doing the break-in. Uh, we got about 50 miles to go. We need an oxygen sensor, which um, was bad, so we're going to have to replace that. We'll finish our break-in, uh, do our oil changes, and this thing is good to go. So stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.